Those of you who follow us on Twitter and Facebook will know that tonight I was due to upload a video about the William Herschel Telescope. But I've put that on hold because we've had some breaking news in the world of deep sky astronomy, and in particular, our beloved Messier objects. Now it's not confirmed yet, but it seems there's been a supernova in M95, which is this galaxy here. Now we're making videos about all the Messier objects, but we haven't done M95 yet. But ever the keen astronomy journalist, I rushed to the University of Nottingham and I've spoken with Mike Merrifield and Megan Gray. I asked them what was going on and to tell me a little bit about what may or may not have happened. Now just to stress, this isn't our official M95 video, we're going to be doing that later in the year, but here's a bit about what's going on with this possible supernova. This is a messy object which is kind of jumping the queue. Uh, I'm sure we've got round to it sooner or later. It's a very pretty barred galaxy, Messier 95. Hopefully we'll get back to it in the context of a galaxy, um, but it's actually got a little bit of sort of personal news of its own this week. So there was a report of a possible supernova, um, so one of these exploding stars in M95, Messier 95. Um, it's at the early stages now where uh, several uh, astronomers, there's quite a lot of ast astronomers around the world who spend their time searching for supernovae going off, and about two or three groups have simultaneously all found this particular sudden bright uh, object appearing apparently in M95, so at the moment it's just a potential supernova, but uh, sooner or later somebody will start getting a decent spectrum of it. It's bright enough, it should be quite easy to study in some detail, so we will be able to confirm by looking, by breaking its light up into the, into the spectrum, we'll be able to tell what kind of supernova it is, and indeed that it is a supernova at all. Well, the thing that almost everyone will notice right now, if they go outside in the evening, is the bright pair of objects in the west. Those are, of course, planets. Those are Jupiter and Venus, glowing very brightly just after the sun goes down. Uh, but if you turn around and look east, you see another planet in the sky, and this is Mars, and it's very distinctive because it's red. And in fact, it helps mark the exact location of where this supernova is, because Mars is only half a degree away from the galaxy in which this supernova has been discovered. And half a degree is not very much when you think of the angular extent of the sky. Half a degree is the size of the full moon. So almost right next door, which is really kind of a, an, an interesting bit of trivia. Well, if, let's start with the galaxy itself. It's a, it's a, it is actually a rather beautiful galaxy. This is a picture of it. This is a negative image of it. So the dark stuff is where the galaxy is and the little black dots here are all stars. But the galaxy is this thing here. It has a, a very strong bar in the middle and it's also famous for the fact that it has a kind of a ring of star formation going on in it as well, which is very clear in this picture. And so actually in the context of a galaxy, it's a classic example of a ringed barred galaxy, very pretty galaxy. Um, but that's, that's, if you like, that's the before picture. And now we have also the after picture, which I'll try and show in kind of the same orientation. So here is the picture that was taken just a night or two ago. And you can see, actually, they kindly label this extra point in here, but it's, it's, you play this game of sort of matching up asterisms, so you match up patterns of stars. So there's a group of three stars here, which we can match up with those three stars here. And then there's a fourth star over there, which is that one over there. And so now midway between that star and that star in the, uh, in the middle there, there's a new object which has appeared. If we go back to this guy, we go from that star to that star, there's nothing bright halfway in between. So this is the new object which has appeared. The interesting thing about it is if you look at this uh, fairly deep original image, there's actually a spiral arm there. So it looks like this bright object is actually inside one of the spiral arms in this galaxy. And the reason why that's significant is because one of the types of supernovae that occurs, uh, a thing called a type 2 supernova, is associated with young massive stars. Young stars go through this. Massive stars go through their lives very quickly, so they explode very quickly as these type 2 supernovae. And because uh, young stars form within these spiral arms, they haven't actually had time to go anywhere. So when one of these type 2 supernovae goes off, it almost goes off sort of not far from where the star was born because it hasn't lived long enough to move very far. So typically you find type 2 supernovae associated with spiral arms where the stars are forming. So it's gone off near Mars in apparent location on the sky. But of course the distances involved are vastly, vastly dis different. Mars is in our own solar system. It's the next planet out from the sun. This supernova taking place in M95 is in a galaxy entirely separate from our own Milky Way. So while they look next, like they're next door to each other on the sky, they're actually separated with a really great distance um, along that direction. So here's something I'm really excited about because literally while I've been editing this video, astrophotographer Nick Simonek who's a familiar face to people who watch deep sky videos, has been capturing this picture 
of the supernova just for us. Now to use Nick's language, he said the conditions were really grim and that's because of Mars. You can see all that light streaming in from the top left. That's light coming from Mars. It made Nick's job really tough. And this is just a quick image. He plans to get more over the coming weeks. But there it is, a smoking gun. It's yet to be confirmed, but it looks like this will be a supernova in M95. And here's another image, a mosaic that Nick made for us. There's the supernova and Mars. It's probably a Type 2 supernova. Again, until somebody takes a spectrum of it and analyzes it, we're not even going to know it's a supernova, yet alone what type of supernova it is. But when they do, they'll probably be able to figure out that it is actually uh, what type of supernova it is. And as I say, my betting would be on one of these Type 2 supernovae because they are associated with these young, massive stars which tend to blow up within the spiral arms where they were born. And since this thing is in, seems to be sort of co-located with one of these spiral arms, it probably is a, a Type 2 supernova going off. Is this a big deal? There's a lot of supernovae go off. I mean, typically a supernova like this goes off once every 20, 30 years in a galaxy. Um, so, you know, it, it means if you're looking at 30 or 40 galaxies, you'll find one a year. So they're not hugely big deals in that sense. What's nice about this one is this is a relatively nearby one, which means we can play various games that you can't play in more distant ones. For example, one of the things I'm sure astronomers are doing, even as we speak, is going back over archival images of this galaxy to try and find the progenitor, to try and find the star that blew up because one of the things you can't usually do when you're studying supernovae is figure out exactly what type of star it is that blew up. Because this is a nearby galaxy, we can actually resolve the galaxy into individual stars. There are almost certainly archival data, for example, taken with the Hubble Space Telescope, that you can go back over to look for the star that it was that actually blew up. So astronomers use rather inconvenient units to measure brightness. We use something called a magnitude, which is a logarithmic scale. Uh, which mimics sort of the response of our own eyes to differences in light levels. On this scale, um, this supernova is a magnitude 13. And that means it's too faint to be seen by the naked eye. We can see objects up to about a magnitude of 6 with our own naked eye. We would need a small telescope to see this supernova. Um, but next door to it is Mars, which on the same scale has a magnitude of around about minus 3. So that's 16 units in magnitude, which is a factor of 2.5 million in brightness. So it's a real contrast between the thing that's right next door to us glowing very brightly, the thing that's much further away that's much, much more intrinsically bright than this piddly little planet, but because of its vast distance, appears much fainter to our own eyes. It's a pretty big bang, one of these things going off. So actually, the, the, the light from it will, you know, you've created this very hot ball of gas, so it's going to keep glowing for a long time. Plus, actually, in its later stages, one of the things you produce in supernovae are radioactive elements, which then decay. So actually, the later stages of the light of a supernova are powered by the decay of radioactive elements, which keeps it going, if you like, keeps the explosion going, keeps the brightness up for some considerable time to come. Oh, astounding things. No, it's very nice to have one sort of, at least astronomically, in our backyard to study in some detail. I sort of said at the start, this is breaking news, this has happened this week, but this didn't really happen this week, did it? No, uh, this particular galaxy I think is about 30 million light years away, so we're talking about something that happened 30 million years ago, which has just about got to us now. So it's old news if you live in that galaxy, but it's breaking news here.